David, you're very famous for your framework on dynamic capabilities. So can you start by just giving maybe a high level overview of that framework? So then we can dig into how does flow maybe parallel some of the capabilities that you talk about cultivating in your framework? I came up with this framework called dynamic capabilities. If I distill it down to its most simple elements, it says the following. That contrary to the textbooks in business and economics, which always talk about optimization and efficiency, that's really secondary for business success. What's primary is the ability to dig out and identify new opportunities to corral the resources that you need in order to address those opportunities and threats. And then if you're successful, you constantly have to be changing and transforming to stay current. So. To get dynamic capabilities, I put dynamic capabilities down to the pursuit of these three mantras, sensing and sense-making, seizing or execution, and transforming, which is as soon as you get it right, you're going to have to adjust it all. And it's really a model of entrepreneurial management. I worked it out just by observing Silicon Valley firms that are successful and also looking at the failures. And really what dynamic capabilities is, I like to tell people it's Silicon Valley in a bottle. It's the essence of what makes our companies so powerfully competitive. I think the U.S. is way better at this than most other folks because we have the entrepreneurial spirit here in America and the willingness to take risk. And we've got the institutions, we've got venture capital, we've got reasonably good government policies behind it, which makes Silicon Valley go. So dynamic capability is about how do you build an enterprise and keep it going. And as I stand back from it, it's really about fast learning in a way, but it's more than fast learning. It's also a set of techniques and processes and procedures to ferret out new opportunities. That's the sensing part. Everybody can often have access to the same data, but unless you actually can see patterns in it, unless you're good at pattern re recognition, you'll miss the opportunity. But even if you see the opportunity, there's a lot of people that just sit on their hands and don't have the ability to assemble the resources to go after it. But that's where I think our entrepreneurs are really good. When I say our entrepreneurs, of course, we bring entrepreneurs from all around the world to the U.S. If you look at Silicon Valley, two thirds of the entrepreneurs are probably born outside the U.S., but they're taking advantage of the institutional structure here and the climate of Silicon Valley. So dynamic capabilities is about how do you build and sustain great organizations. And it's a little bit like the good to great thing, but it's really in a much more explicit social science framework that people that sort of study the literature can relate to. It's not just a silver bullet. It's something which is rooted in collective understanding of the social sciences. It's fascinating. So it's not just about sensing the opportunities and seeing them, right? So there's pattern recognition there, but it's also seizing it. So I'm hearing some decision-making pieces. How do we make decisions as leaders? So, and also potentially overcome some anxiety in, that might be attached to high levels of uncertainty. So how do you make recommendations or coach leaders to think about not just sensing the opportunities, but seizing them as well? Yeah, well, that's a tough one. It depends on the size of the organization. Of course, a small organization, it's pretty easy to glide from, assuming you've got enough resources, enough financial resources, you, you glide from, look, I've figured out what's going on in this market. Now I've got to, you know, create a business model to address it and a business plan to implement. I go ahead and do it. There's not much to move out of the way. The challenge gets bigger when you've got a large organization because you may see all of that, but execution can be slowed down by bureaucratic processes. So what you have to do is build an entrepreneurial culture because if the structure gets too rigid, you'll never get anything done in a timely fashion. So you have to overlay an entrepreneurial culture because then that enables people to just get together no matter what the rules and processes and procedures are to push to change them if necessary to execute so fast execution gets hard as you get big but in entrepreneurial companies they still seem to manage to do it